10 we were two. talking about the crankshaft position sensor. We've been noticing a, um, a few calls lately where the motor is taking a little bit to start and um, the most common code that we get is from the crankshaft position sensor. Um, there's a lot of things that we could go into when it comes to fuel, idling, idling low, idling, you know, like why it could come on and all that stuff. Um, the, the function of the crankshaft position sensor basically is just to, low, to tell the ECU where the motor is. Um, how can you tell if your crankshaft position sensor is, is bad? If it's because there is one thing you can, it could be not aligned correctly or gapped correctly, or it could be bad. Um, if it's bad and you have your motor connected, the very first thing before you do anything else, my motor is not starting, and I I know I have gas, and I know I have the the I don't know everything is fine, but it won't start. Okay, well, the very first thing that I always ask is if it's obviously an EFI or a carburetor, okay? Well, now it's an EFI. When you crank your motor, you see that little LED light on the, on the thing. You know, when you turn the ignition on, this, uh, this light comes on. When you crank it, it's gonna go for maybe one or two turns and it's gonna shut off. When the light shuts off, that means that the ECU is receiving the signal from the crankshaft sensor. Okay. Now, if you crank it and the light does not go on, um, off, if it doesn't shut off, then you have a problem with your crank sensor. Now, why is that? Because the crank sensor is going to detect the movement of the teeth. And there is, all those teeth are spaced with uh, exactly with the exception of one. There's one tooth missing, which is the locating for that crank sensor. Um, the crank sensor is pretty much like an on and off switch for the ECU. And it's just gonna, that's, that's, that's all it does. It's just a signal on and off, that's it. There is no, there is a, when coming to diagnose a crank sensor, there is not like a, a signal going in or out and how many bolts you get or million bolts and, and all that stuff, you know? Not like a, like a oxygen sensor. So there is that, the, if it, it, it's, it's, it's gonna be either bad or it's gonna be not gap corrected. Now, how are we going to gap this thing? When Briggs started making these EFIs, they would tell us to, uh, to gap the crank sensor at 30 thousandths of an inch. They have updated that information and now we are, uh, we're gapping that at 10 thousandths. I'm thinking, I, we don't know the, the, the reason behind all that, but I'm thinking, it's because they did not, on the marine side, the turf side, the turf side is a completely different world. They don't have as much water, as much vibration, I don't think, that we have, as we have. So that's why uh, they came up with this marine side. On the marine side, we, we got these things at 10,000 of an inch. I'm thinking it's because they, they now have an idea and they took in account all the vibration and all the contamination that we put these things through. Um, so it's really simple to gap this thing. Obviously you are going to remove, which we already did, we removed the front cowling and everything. This is the crank sensor right here. I don't know if you can bring the camera, Jeff. I'm gonna try and pull this off. off. Don't get too close. Actually, I may have to shut off the light. So the crank sensor is right here. I already loosened it up. There is a connection, the connection you cannot see it, it's up here on the top. Um, so when you when you inspecting this thing, just make sure, obviously, you make sure that there is no wires pinched. You know, there is a crank sensor, there is a, um, the pigtail that goes to the ECU and all that stuff. Um, so I already loosened this up just to show you guys. It's just a, I don't know, like I said, we normally, when we do have to adjust this, they, I see them, I think the farthest away I've seen it is like 45 thousandths, um, yeah, 45 thousandths of an inch from the flywheel, which it is bad because it's not going to pick up the signal. The, the thing inside here, it's, it's, the easy way to explain it is like a little magnet that, um, that is the, that sends the signal to it, it picks up the, 
how close it is to the to the flywheel and it just ends it up. But um, it's really simple. The, the way that I do this and it makes it easier, I kind of like, after I loosen it, so you're gonna take this off. And these motors now, they have the blue Loctite. Okay, back then, I, I, I don't know, I've had, a, I've run into a couple of them that they don't come with a blue Loctite, so I just put a drop in there. Make sure the, the screw doesn't come back and loose again. So what I do, I just tighten it a little bit, just a very tiny bit. Just enough so I can move it up and down. And if you don't have a filler gauge... Um, Business card. Exactly. See, you learn something. J JT Warren just posted that. He's like, a business card is always yes, a really sir. good. So J JT, a hat for you, my friend. Thanks for jumping on. In a, in a pinch, your business card does you really well. Business Even cards, depending on who makes them, they are anywhere from 10 to 12, hmm. 10 to 12 thousandths of an inch. Yeah. And this is just the same as gapping the coils. Right. Yeah. Exactly the same, it's just the, the problem is just only have one. So just do that, hold it down, and tighten it. Pull it, and obviously you, I mean, after you check it and all that and whatnot, you re-tighten it, check that it goes in. And then you want to spin this by hand. Be careful with this um, screws because they will make you bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you want to spin this thing a couple of times, well, not a couple of times, just, just a little bit, just to make sure that there is not um, any interference. When you do that, you make sure that it's got correctly and everything. It goes, it's tight, and um, now if you had uh, an air coat or um, the mill, the check engine light on, the mill light, whatever you want to call it, if you have that on, um, most of you guys know already, and I don't really like to tell people how to reset the ECU to clear the codes. Obviously, you want to do that before you start again, so in case the code comes back, you will know that it's back, and uh, you clear the history of that thing. If that doesn't fix it, then we move on to something else. That could be the problem, but normally, um, if you have a code with that, with that thing, it's going to be that's the that's the easy fix. That's ninety percent of the time, it's just out of a out of adjustment, and that fixes everything. Do you, Keith? Do you want to tell them how to adjust it? How to do the memory? Do you remember that? Uh, if I remember correctly, no, you don't. <laughs> that's uh, the key: on and off five times in five seconds. Within and five then, seconds. And within five seconds, and your last off, then you need to count to ten seconds. Go to the on position, count to 10 seconds, then go to start it. So make sure you got the 10 second intervals in there. If you go too early, then you're gonna have to reset it. Those 10 seconds is just for the ECU to go through all the sensors, recognize everything again, and make sure that everything is on, it's getting powered, and uh, that's it, it's pretty simple. Questions? Call, call Ricky. Ricky. <laughs>